Today we've come to more ways to set off on a great trip to do the National 97. And with us today, host and co-commentator, Sir Donald Percy. Wow, it's been a while since I uh, had a few words, but make sure, I'll, I'll be saying quite a few things. Hi there, uh, time for the number one reporter, your Roman reporter, Sir Donald, yes, is with you now and forever. <laughs> And there he is, folks, on the M1, this very second. What would you reckon to might be on the road to success? Uh, well, I don't know. It's got to be good news for Derby and Kevin. Don't know. Can he don't know that, you know? It's got to be good news. It's got to be good news. Good news for Jubba. <laughs> good news for Jubba. <laughs> Mike, you've got a you write-up. Send it, Telegraph. Jubba's on the road, Jubba's on the road success. to success. On the road to success. In the Telegraph. Oh, we're back in the later. See it. Well, it's uh, ten past seven, and uh, Don is anticipating a possible off us ten pint. But the big question is, will we get there in time? Because Don is looking very, very concerned that he might not. Don, would it's over to you? Yes, uh, I am uh, very, very concerned. Uh, basically, we need uh, the alcohol content to uh, bring out the very best. The very best indeed in uh, our performances. Yes, it is the, the nectar of uh, the, God. the gods. So, uh, what would an average New Zealander do the day before a race day? Is it uh, 20 pints or just a 10? Well, probably only about 10. 10? Yeah. So, uh, for one night in the year, the New Zealanders become homosexual type of <laughs> They're not quite homosexuals. Oh, a bit of but. <laughs> a bit of feminine. <laughs> We cut back slightly. Yes, yeah, she's best. <laughs> from that match, I mean. <laughs> cut back from, you know, 20, 30 fines, back down to 10. Yeah, just want to... Woman's sort of intake. Yeah. yeah. Well, all I can say is I'm, I'm a complete bag of nerves at the moment. My stomach is absolutely knotted up and I'm just... I just need a pint to settle myself. I won't sleep otherwise tonight. I just won't relax. Where's the sick bag? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, g'day. Well, we're here we are at these services on the M1. We're just in for a bit of tuck, a bit of grub, a bit of kai, get some food down here. <laughs> Sir Donald, what you want to say, Sir Donald? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here we are. We could be lost, we're not too sure. But eventually, we shall find our way. I shall hand you over now to uh, third man on the mark, David. Well, as you, Don said, we've uh, travelled all the way down to Portsmouth under the able direction of our coast driver, Bernard von Hitlerson. <laughs> Bernard, formerly from Germany and having no ties whatsoever to the former Third Reich, has been making all sorts of threats all night. <laughs> but finally, we think we are here. Indeed. Up ahead. Is that the hotel I see? No. Just the concentration camp. I think it might be the concentration camp. <laughs> this, is, this is Portsmouth. This is our hotel. Right next to the casino, the nightclub, and the takeaway bar. Good choice, Frank. Good choice. Well, just like I said, I'm, I'm glad we're here because the, the natives were getting restless and uh, their throats were getting dry. So um, I'm just looking forward to my pint now. Shall I hand you back? <laughs> What sort of shot are you going for? Well, uh, I'm playing. Crucial shot to the this is a this is a tournament now, a golf tournament, and I've got to play my full shot. And you should nine iron. Just on my survey. No balls. <laughs> Let's just survey the scene. It's my shot. Full shot. And this could shot be to the green. very, very important. I'm going to like try and chip it in. This is a very pull and do the business. No, right of it. See. Oh, oh, really there. oh wow! Really there. I just think that shot went. That shot went very well. Yeah, but that's because you can. He moved the ball. Moved the did, did he do that? He did. Well, oh, I, I thought he was just looking after my. Uh, 
you know, my, my own interest. Well, my, my game is the only game where what you do actually doesn't win. It depends on what the opponent does. This is excellent. Yeah, go on then. Because my game is bowls. Right. And I can actually draw four shots closer to the jack. And then if my opponent has one last wood, they can actually shoot all my woods out of the way. Yeah. And I don't win. That's is, right. With, with respect, that is it, where with the fault respect lies with your yes. Is that a game of a load of balls? <laughs> <laughs> Very well just said by uh <laughs> Focus on that. Oh right, uh, that's the bit of debris. We can Not move it. Not bit of debris. We can, we can move it. You can move the debris. It needs to be moved. You, um, you can move it. You can't. Uh, no, it goes debris. It's on his, no, he it's on his last shot. What are you talking no. about? Surely. No, no. Surely it can move the debris. No. If it's not to it's do on the surface. Yes. If it's not to do with um, a divot hole, it cannot move it. Yeah, oh, right. Now, he's having some it. rules here now. That's nothing to do with the rules. The rules and regulate the rules. That's your club. That is. <laughs> that's not. your club. He is giving you some rules now. The rules and regulations of, um, of golf is that if it is. Um, if it's not a pitch mark, you cannot remove it. Right. It's an integral um, part of the course. To Sir Donald, who's going to take his last shot. Four apart. As, as the caddy, as the caddy, I'm going to give him his putter, and this is going to earn me, as a caddy, £20,000. It is. Now, can he, or can he, <laughs> can he put from one inch out? <laughs> that is the big question. The tension, all the tension. I just want to bit of I've got a finger in the way. Fleck, here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Did you see that flat? I did, I did. It's going to be rectified. Clean. My caddy can do that for me. Can you clean it, please? Thank you. Filming, doing it. Oh, my balls. Thank you. <laughs> you spot, you spot, you spot. Spot. Time you can't replace it because the caddy's removed it, you've got to replace it. That's it, I cannot re uh, <laughs> replace it. My caddy's uh, removed it, he's got to replace it. Okay, now. For my shot. Yeah. Now for my shot. The flag is right. Here we go. This is for history. Sadano! Yes! Sadano wins the 87 British Open. Thank you. Sadano. Well, I'm so overcome by what I've just done. It means so much to me. Yeah, this must be a terrific moment. You've trained all your life for this. It's come now at last. But the years anyway, of self I'm dedication. I'm so grateful to all my sponsors. My job. <laughs> uh, but uh, Hi, hello. he's got a friend, uh, or a good mate of his, from New Zealand. He's also a good, good uh, contributor to our, uh, our effort. But uh, anyway, thank you very much, uh, and I hope to return next year and uh, defend, defend my title and to do as good as I've done this year. Thank you. <laughs> this McCaddy. And he will have it. McCaddy will have everything. Well done. He deserves it. When he wants to. Sir Donald, Sir Donald. Sir Donald. And I'm only the coach driver, but I've been asked to present Donald, Sir Donald, with this uh, gift for winning the Indoor British Open. The Indoor British Open. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to uh, come back and win my title again. Well, I hold them. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm so pleased to have uh, achieved its uh, awesome, awesome. <laughs> effort. But, uh, awesome! Ladies and gentlemen,
Gentlemen, I give you the gun all place it. Well, mate, Kev, we are now uh, getting ready to retire. Hospitality Inn. The Hospitality Inn? Yep. Uh, what a place, very smart. Can you just scan the area? Just now, through here is where we decide oh, we're going to rest our heads, our lovely little heads. Our lovely little heads. For the night. Because tomorrow is going to be a kids. very tough day. We so could, we could, we could, we could be nasty. Come we could do. We could be nasty and say, "Oh, we're going to wake up on the Is take a bit of time out. Yeah. But this is our where we are going to rest our little heads. Little heads. <laughs> Poor big heads. <laughs> if you mind, job. I'm going to finish. If you mind, job. <laughs> National. And Sir Donald Percy is making his final preparation. Sir Don. Yes, uh, I'm looking forward to a good race. Um, what I'll do, I'll just run around at the back and see if I can come through at the end. Cheers for that. Can I run an interview, Pete? <laughs> yes, yeah, so what would you like to know? Uh, you would like to know about what this honey tastes like? Yeah, go on. <laughs> Sir Donald Percy's been practicing his speech for later. Apparently we've heard that... Uh, yeah. It's the the birch, birch, yeah, Birchfield. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> can, can I just finish straight to the show? <laughs> 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 Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Put your hands on All me. All I'm saying is I just want to be treated like a human being. Yeah. God damn it, shit. I want to keep me fucking trust so I don't know what's going on around here, man. This is a fucking slum. That conversation on Tom Cruise. All oh, right. I hated him. Nick. Ah. Ah. He's totally crap, that Tom Cruise. <laughs> no, I mean, we think that he's absolutely a no-no. <laughs> Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, it's just my neck, man. What's that sound for? Shit. What? Oh. <laughs> 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 Clearly, you're in the clean. <laughs> <laughs> the tent is up, and Sir Donald is ready. At the actual venue? Yes, Sir Donald? I, I think I'm uh, going to be. Wearing my long sleeved uh, shirt today. Today. With us today we have the, the club president. Sir Peter. In a shambles with these damn numbers. How do you do? Have you ever been lonely? Have you ever been blue? <laughs> Pete, Don's got something to bring to your attention. I'm not singing yet. No, no, we don't want you to sing. You can guess what we've just seen. What? Lee Page. It's covered from top to bottom in mud. Right. Yeah. Having demoed the is, course. Is, yeah, it's down in the old. Uh, commentator's box with Dave Denton. Seriously? And he's got... Yeah! It, wait, it, is, it does suffer Dave Denton. Yeah. He's been testing the course. Yeah, honestly. Uh, and he's, he's yeah. obviously right. He was writing down stuff yeah. in the lap. He's doing a report on yeah. it. What do you reckon? I reckon he could have run. Exactly! <laughs> That's what we said. Yeah. Damn silly. Yeah, I don't know. And now we're going to have to rely on Carl. Correct. Yeah. <laughs>
Sonne! He's just given Dave Moorcroft a, a few words of wisdom. Yeah. Well, just up here on the on the left here, we can see Mr. Mike Chubb wrestling. This obviously is the uh, the pose of a successful cross country runner. Hold on one second. So, Mr. Chubb. <laughs> Mr. Jab, what are you listening to there? Uh, not a lot, not a lot. Not a lot. Why not a lot? Because uh, it's finished. CD's finished. <laughs> <laughs> so is this what you uh, what you do when you've uh, had a hard race? Does it you just come here and listen to nothing at all? That's right. Yeah, essential relaxation technique. Right, that's good. So what happened in your race today? You had a good run? Uh, yeah, I sort of started, kept it going, and then finished. Yeah. And what was your final place? Uh, about 28, something like that. We hear you're a bit of a, a mega superstar on the uh, the TV there. Uh, interview with Sky TV this morning. Yeah, she's quite cute. Yeah. Yeah. You fancy your chances later with her? Uh, I don't know. I'll have to negotiate about that. <laughs> negotiate with who? Not with uh, Miss Wainwright over here. <laughs> I think she's actually sleeping. We're better. We're better. Let her sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, was, uh, I was quite surprised with the performance today. We had a bit of a rough night last night. Yeah. Well, I think you owe us. It's a formula for success. Do you think maybe you should get Don and uh, Don and Kev along as sort of as neighbours, <laughs> neighbours in the future? Well, I don't know. I might have been deprived of top ten placing today. That's all I can say. <laughs> so you don't think it helped your performance being kept awake all night by the uh, by the cameraman? <laughs> what I'd like to say is, was it was it Tom Cruise or was it was it the other guy? I mean, uh, was it both of them? I mean, you know. <laughs> Thanks very much, Mr. Jab. Right. <laughs> 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 Interview? Yeah. Okay. It's the Mike Marauder. It is. The man who travels a lot. Travelling up the M1 on the way home again, and we're just going to go have a chat to a couple of gentlemen who weren't actually involved in the running today, but more the officiating. First, Mr. Barry Parker, who was one of the official officials, and then uh, Pete Wilco, one of the Derby and County officials. And Barry, mind if we have a few words? What about? Carl? Well, about today. Carl. The first, first of all, first of all, I understand you've um, you've been sitting next to Carl throughout the last two and a half days. How do you feel about that? Unfortunately, that's very true. Yeah. And what's your thoughts on it? Did you, did you enjoy it? Was it a good experience? <laughs> it's an experience I won't forget, I'll tell you. <laughs> so, do you think you've come away a better person for it? <laughs> you must be joking. <laughs> so, it's not something you'd recommend to other people then? No, certainly not. <laughs> Moving on then to today's race, we understand you were one of the officials in today's race. Um, we looked it up in the program and we saw you're a, a judge slash record official. Does this mean you had to judge records being officially slashed? Uh, not exactly, no. I was actually a stopper. You're a stopper, but you were listed as a, a record official. My job was changed during the day. Did they give you one of those nice red outfits and they had stopper written on them? That's correct. It was a D Derby and County top, actually. Yeah. It was a Derby and County top. So when you're a stopper, did you find it like, difficult to stop people? Did they want to keep moving or would you just go, stop? No, it's just uh, some people tried to rub me on some things. I think it was a condom. <laughs> So next, next year, next year you're going to be going for one of the different jobs. So we know there were competition disbursement officials, and there are also people who had to go, watch out, here's a rock. Now, what do you think of those jobs? Is it something you'd aspire to? <laughs> Not really, no. <laughs> Thanks very much, Barry. Now we'll move on to uh, Pete Wilco, the man in the, man in the, uh, the action seat up here. Good afternoon, Pete. Just, just going to sleep. Oh, I'm, just going to sleep. Yeah, I'm just going to sleep, yeah. You don't look very sleepy there. You look wide awake as usual. <laughs> oh dear, I'm tired. <laughs> Did you have a good day today? A bit persistent. Uh, you yeah. just Did you have a good day at the races today? Better than you, what? Yeah. <laughs> what was your highlight of your day? 
Seeing you come in. Seeing me come in. <laughs> <laughs> Made a lot to you, did it? Is that thing actually working? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know it's one of these soft yeah, ones. Yeah, it's going to sit down. Oh, if I break the arm, you can fly it through the window. Yeah. I think we're in trouble here. We've, uh, we should be sitting down. You like this song later on, though, Pete, because we understand you're a bit of a singer. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> One final question: Who's your favourite Spice Girl? <laughs> well, we're sorry for that slight interruption in the uh, in the interview there. We thought we were going pretty well with uh, Mr. Pete Wilco's sing-song expert, but the Bernard von Hitler interrupted us somewhat with a, a bit of a "Oi, get back down to your seats, or you will be shot." <laughs> would be a sin. <laughs> Release me and let me love again. And I will always want to near. Her, her lips are warm while yours are cold. Release me, my darling, let me go. <laughs> Can I make some, can I, can I tailor this towards the postman that we know? Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Carl the postman was uh, retiring after 35 years in the, in the job as a postman. And um, all the people he was delivering to knew he was retiring, so they were giving him gifts. The first house he went to deliver the mail to, they gave him a bottle of champagne. The second house he went to, they gave him a box of uh, fine chocolates. The third house they went to was a, was a pack of uh, Cuban cigars. Carl was feeling pretty good about this. The fourth house, though, he knocks on the door and gives the, uh, the owner a mail. And it's this gorgeous blonde wearing this very, very skimpy little outfit. She said, come here, Carl. So Carl says, OK. She goes upstairs, proceeds to have uh, the most wonderful sex he's ever had in his life. <laughs> Probably the only sex he's ever had in his life. <laughs> anyway, goes back downstairs and she uh, fries up a couple of eggs and uh, puts out some toast and a bit of bacon and gives him a pound. And he says, what's this all about? She says, well, last night I uh, told my husband that um, it was your last day today and uh, asked him what I should give him and he said, oh, fuck him, give him a pound. The breakfast was my idea. Well, we heard quite a lot from the boys up the front of the coach, but now it's time to spend a little bit of time with the juniors down the back. Here they are, and they're going to sing us a bit of a song. Oh, you're lucky, huh? Sing us something, go on. <laughs> There you go, a fine piece of singing there from the girls. Very original, very creative, good style. Well, what about down the back? Anybody down the back want to make a comment on how their race was? Or and what do you think of the coach driver? Is he really like sort of German enough for us? Is he a complete bastard? <laughs> and is there a hidden microphone in here and I'm about to get thrown out of the coach? No comment. Oh, what's wrong with making fun of the Germans? I mean, they did lose the war after all. <laughs> what do you think of our bus driver? Oh, he's all right. He's not bad. He's <laughs> like to I'd just like to comment on his driving. Poor. Yeah. What, is, what, what, do you, what don't you like about his driving? It's not so much his driving, it's the bus. The suspension is bad. Very bad. At the back here. I thought that was just you, like, jumping up and down all the time. Oh, no. As you can also hear, we've got a good music at last. This is a bit of German house music. <laughs> house music? <laughs> that what you like. I think the music has been turned off because I'm not sitting down. <laughs> I've had enough of that kiwi and I'm going to shoot them when he gets off the bus. <laughs> No. Now we're back now, back live, back live on the M1. Now it's over to Mr. Nyshed. Nyshed, what happened to you today? You had a few rumours that you uh, you won the race really quickly or what exactly? I flew around the second lap, no one saw me, I didn't get the medal at the end, I was not happy. So you're, you're a bit pissed off basically oh, that, you know, <laughs> your, your, your rightful prize, you were robbed of your rightful prize. I was, I was. I'm not impressed with the British National Federation or whatever they are. It's just unbelievable what they did to me today. 
unbelievable. <laughs> I suppose you were hoping that, the, hoping that the publicity from winning today was going to help your modelling career. It was, it was. I just don't believe what happened. Here's a shot of nice shed. <laughs> Amazing likeness, really. I mean, so what? What is that girl saying to you in your ear? You're going to get a piece of this. <laughs> right, back to you in the studio, Kev. Oh, oh, that was nice. <laughs> Bit of a technological innovation with this bus is when you go in, the engage line looks like. Whoa, hey. it's an engage. <laughs> Fabulous. Was that good or was that good? Congratulations, you've just got engaged. How did that feel? <laughs> it felt good. It was good for you, wasn't it? It felt good. It was good for me too, thanks very much. Did you enjoy watching? Oh, it was gorgeous, lovely. What I'm saying is I just want to be treated like a human being. Yeah. Yeah. God, I that shit. Just want to keep me okay, fucking trucks so I don't know what's going on around here, man. <clears throat> If I was Tom Cruise, and this was Mission Impossible, remember Tom Cruise can act a lot better than Michael J. Fox. I would right now be climbing out this emergency exit on the top of the bus and hanging out over the front of the bus and going, Hi Bernard, how's it going? And then he'd break for Kev. He'd break for him then. He'd break so hard that Kev would go straight through that front one screen at 100 miles an hour and would see what would really happen when idiots play around on buses. This could be a bit dangerous. <laughs> nice head. Nice. Nice head. Yes. Where's your phone? Phone's there. Hi. Excellent. Does it cost you anything, mate? Dial 0800 numbers. No, seriously. It does, yeah. Oh, okay, I won't. Well, so who are you calling at the moment then? President, what's that? What's he saying? <laughs> <laughs> this is what every girl wants. This is the slim mode. This honestly makes you look about sort of five foot taller and two foot thinner. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's slim mode. That's okay, if you don't like this. Yeah, we can't have this. My god, what happened to you? Did you just put on weight or what? <laughs> Hang on, hang on, hang on. You might not believe me, but if you've ever seen those TV programs where everyone turns into squares, like where you can't see their face, well, that's what's happening at the moment, so nobody knows who you are. Does this girl over here have a hair advert? Yes. What, what are you on about? <laughs> that girl. You now look like you're in an old photograph. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Having a good time? <laughs> yes, thank you. Ten. Ten. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. All right, let's back to Dave, your roving reporter on the M1. We're now going to do something a little bit more daring, a little bit more exciting, something we haven't tried before. We're going to go to the toilet on board this bus. We have to be very careful about this so that Bernhard von Hitler does not see us. Here we go. Hold on. Might as well, might as well give me the whole video. All right. I'm in the um, pretty close to the toilet, pushing to open. Hold on, where's the light switch? There you go. Hey, we found the light switch. Well, hold on a second. <coughs> well, that probably won't. This is the toilet. Down there. Bit bumpy. I can't imagine anyone would ever want to do anything in here, really. Not while it's bumpy. That's just moving. It smells terrible. Right, that's enough for out of here. It's going well, Dave. It's going uh, well. Going well, going well. You saw this bush? I'm waiting for you, Carpenter. Oh, you kiwi. <laughs> an, an interesting idea just been proposed by Kev Gunn. He would like Bernard to stop the bus, please. I said, how do you think Bernard would react to that? <laughs> Bernard would not react to that. He would just explode in your face. <laughs> you would be dead. <laughs> About 10 hectares of this land would be gone when he explodes. <laughs> we need sustenance to keep us going, mint with whole. Definitely whole, definitely minty. <laughs> Has anyone ever told you you look sort of, and sound could possibly a bit like Samuel L. Jackson? I think so. Well, quite possibly. Did you ever see him on uh, TFI Friday? Everyone asks me if, if Sam, Samuel Lee Jackson is my dad, and I always say, yeah, it's my dad, it looks like my dad. Especially when I go to uni on my 70 nights, when I have my afro up, going on, they go, hey, Jules, think, no, 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 that's my dad. 
Not me, sorry. My name's Nash. <laughs> I've been asked to tell this joke on the grounds that the last one was a little bit rude because it had like the F word in it and it was a bit, you know, can't really show that on public TV. <laughs> so here's the joke. I don't think it's that good, but it's uh, in the latest FHM. There's this bloke who's sitting at home watching TV one night and he's uh, pretty tired, it's pretty late at night and there's this knock on the door. A bit angry he is, so he gets up and goes to the door and outside there's this large stag beetle, six feet high it is. And he says, Oi, what do you think you're doing knocking on the door at this time of night? And the beetle says nothing, just hits him a couple of times, kicks him and punches him. And he sort of eventually manages to crawl inside, closes the door and locks it. Goes and calls an ambulance, gets taken to hospital. Gets to the hospital and the, the doctor says to him, well, what happened? And he's a bit embarrassed about this, doesn't really want to you know, tell him the story about this large stag beetle that beat him up. But eventually he says to him and the doctor says, oh that's 